Hello there, Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam. And in this little, little video series, we are going to analyze the tournament footage from the Torneo di Spada, which we held at the beginning of August, where we fought with Salt and Buckler and Wapier. It was a fairly small tournament, but we managed to record every ring and also the finals. So in this first video, we are going to have a closer look at the preliminaries of the Sword and Buckler, especially my fights, of course, because then I can give you my thoughts on the tactics I employed and how I was going to approach these fights. Because I already uh, explained it in a lot more detail in a previous video, so if you want a detailed look about the rule set, uh, go over there. I'll link it in the info box and I'll also put a link in the description down below. But basically, in our tournament rule set, it is awarded first and foremost that you can manage to fight about getting a hit without getting hit in return. And the um, double hit rule is, is quite extensive. So after you've performed a hit, your opponent has one more action with a maximum of one step to get their hit in as well. And these will be uh, counted equally. And so there, there are some points for, for head versus feet versus torso, but that's not too important. The first and most important one is actually uh, not getting hit, basically. So this is, um, I think this is a really nice rule set and it basically encourages fencing that isn't depending on doubling or getting an afterblow to a higher value target because well, after all, we can't really say which effect uh, our hits would have on the opponent. So, of course, we, we try to distinguish between valid hits and some incidental contacts, of course. But, um, yeah, well, if you are getting hit to the hand, this could also be a fight ender, right? So, well, I agree that um, a hit to the head is probably stems from a more skillful action and has to be prepared more carefully, the first and most important thing after all should uh, be not getting hit because our art is one about self-defense. Okay, unfortunately in this first uh, first video of the, the four that are to come, um, the video quality is not quite up to par as it is, uh, it is usual. Well, I tried to set the focus manually on the middle of the ring and then I got to fight in that ring uh, so I couldn't take care of the camera anymore. Uh, but the focus, uh, yeah, I don't know what it focused, maybe, maybe a fly at the back of the hall or something like that. But I added, it, um, I added uh, visual cues, so hit markers, and I also commented on every action so you can get a bit better insight on the tactics I employed. Okay, so I hope you enjoy and without further ado, let's go. So every opponent needs to be felled out properly. But I know Dimitri from several Berlin buckler boats. So I try to start aggressive to gain some ground and to get some, let's say, psychological initiative. Then again, the hands are my most desired target and if I see that my opponent follows these hands attack too much then I go low to open up the high line here to the head. So with this pressure I can then go for little feints to then open up waiting for my opponent to lift their hand for their own blow and this is basically a tempo that Giovanni Della Gocchia advises us to use when they lift their hand. It's the moment to attack, of course, and be aware of any afterblows. So I'm already doing really well because I know for advancing to the finals I need around a survival rate of 50% or higher. And basically for now I got two thirds already. And here something happens that will happen quite a number of times and that is that the tip of the sword is going to fly away. Well, that kind of happens. 
The danger if you think you're safe because you're doing really well is of course then uh, being too passive. And here I give uh, Dimitri the advantage in initiative which he then abuses to attack to my leg. So the next one is against Thomas from my own club Schildwache Potsdam. And since I know Thomas pretty well, there's again not really a need to feel out anything, but I want to disguise my attention, so I go with some flourish at the beginning and then get his attention up to strike down below. So in this next one, on the contrary, I'll be probing quite a bit, trying to fish for the hands with a couple of reversi, so strikes that really go towards the sword hand and of course then trying to provoke a foolish tempo of him getting then him on the repost so the counter also trying to get around the buckler with a couple of uh, Sturzhaus but here I'm trying to go low but my buckler isn't really covering the line so he gets the thrust around it so it's a usual double So for reference, judging in Sword and Buckler is really hard and I think the judges on this weekend reviewing uh, this footage have done really a great job, so good on them. In this next one though, I get once again the tempo of Giovanni Della Gocchio of Thomas rising his hands and I see that immediately and strike towards his elbow and covering myself while withdrawing. So in other rule systems you have quite a lot of bouts to adjust to your opponent. With only three in this system, well, there's usually not a lot of time. And here Aaron call, uh, gets me by surprise with his quick st step forward into the face. And I'll now have to adjust immediately to these quick and explosive motions. So usually what I want to do against these opponents is to let them attack, let them get on the offensive because I don't really know if they are going to be too, too itchy basically um, to defend and instead attacking into my own attack and I want to get this really nice uh, defense and counter. Parry repost is a really good way in my opinion to deal with really explosive fighters that you can't make a good tell on. So I want to hold quite a bit more distance and my attacks are even more than before just meant as provocations. Not really meant to hit in any first attention but to draw out an action that I can then abuse. For example uh, if he goes slow to attack his hands. But then again every defense has its risk and so here I get Barely, but I get hit in the head and even scores a point. The next one is against Alexander, fellow YouTuber and uh, Viking martial artist, which I'm quite fond of fencing because I really like his style and how he approaches the fight. And while I score the first hit and Alexander even acknowledges it, uh, Michael, so our judge, basically tells us that the judges actually have to see the, uh, the hits to evaluate if they are actually valid and I can get that so we'll just uh, repeat this bout. So I tried to draw him out of position with a falso manco but he now reacts better in defending his sword hand so I make the mistake of falling too much again into a rhythm of parry and repost not really uh, like keeping the initiative so I get punished with a hit to my arm. So my next bout I want to take a bit more care of my personal defenses. So the last one was a bit sloppy. So here I would like to engage in a bind and then attack out of it. So basically luring my opponent into a strata play and then disengage and hitting them on the way out because I think that's a really good way of uh, getting a safe hit and slowly but surely I get to overwhelm Alexander until 
I get behind his blade and strike to his head, which is then scored as a hand hit, but well, that actually doesn't matter in this rule set too much because the most important part is still that I hit without uh, getting hit. In the last bout I immediately see that Alexander lets his left elbow stick out a bit, so I go for the quick Falso Impuntado or Sturzhau from the right and that scores me the point and is actually a pretty safe action from that distance. So Christoph is another opponent that I have never fought before, so there's a bit more feeling out and I try to, well, like really corner him to um, let him go out of options basically, so he has to throw something and here, well that's a really hard one on the judges actually, because his blow lands on my shield but then it of course uh, glides through because these blades are blunt after all but even sharp swords could do that and it slips under my arm well, so well, I'll draw a cut over his neck uh, Michael has now to judge if he scores a point and he actually doesn't so um, I think it's 50-50 so I wouldn't mind if he had scored this uh, in favor of Christoph as well <laughs> So since Christoph basically got told that there wasn't enough intention behind his cut, I'm basically expecting that he will be not uh, a bit more forceful now. But I immediately recognize that he's again giving a lot of drown, so I just actually try to push him out without uh, risking too much. So this is another good way to score some easy points. That's actually a funny historical fact as well, that if you would have retreated too much and given too much ground, that would be frowned upon as well. So um, I don't mind it scoring points at all. And here in the last one, I get the nice hit to the legs while my uh, buckler covers the top because I again provoked on the high line to that gen, uh, to after that get low. Next up is my fight against Lorenzo and we are already approaching the end of the pool so these are the last three fights and I think I've saved the toughest opponents for last actually so all my three opponents that are coming now made it actually to the finals. So we are both trying to, to get a clear hit and while I land on the head here it's not scored as a valid hit but then again after covering this mandrito to my inside I immediately repose with my own reverso basically another action from Giovanni Dalla Rocchi which you as well find in his uh, defenses and counter attacks from the guards. <laughs> One thing you will see me doing over and over again is to fairly quickly advance to the middle of, a, of the hall. Basically taking as much ring space as I can get without risking too much. So I don't want to uh, run there because then it would be hard to stop. But I want to take space fairly quickly to not get cornered in any way. And here my defense in principle was right but Lorenzo does a nice tondo so basically a horizontal cut which just skips under my my tip and thus uh, hitting me into the head but then again that kind of blow against Guardi di Testa will always uh, be followed up basically with a mandrito of its own so he gets uh, hit as well and we both scar the double on the head. 
So the last one I see Lorenzo taking a really low guard. So I usually want to attack high, but that is where his trap light and he defended high with the buckler while um, stabbing multiple times on the low line. And while I get the first one, the second one I miss with my buckler. And since I stopped attacking any further or defending with my blade, which is really my mistake, I uh, get hit. My next opponent is Corneos, which I know quite well from the Berlin Buckler Boats. And I know he really strives for the Strette, the place in the binds where he really focuses a lot of his training play. So I don't want to give him that situation at all if I can help it. So personally, I'll go for quick beats to the blade and then strike around while he's still engaging with my reverso in that case. Another really important thing to deny your opponent's Drette, so the engaging in the bind is good footwork. Right? So I make a couple of big blows that he thinks he has to block with the buckler and then fainting myself around until I get the hand on the hit. And for the last one, I basically want to keep doing what I'm doing here and not really engage. So yeah, basically I want to keep my distance, keep fainting, keep throwing attacks that he has to engage if he doesn't want to give up his, his hands basically because he sticks them out already. So here I go with the fainted imbroccata into a fainted mandrito, but then go around with a reverso to the legs and score the point. The last bout is against Marius, another member of my club, which actually moved away right before the tournament. So um, yeah, that's always really really sad if friends move to another city and especially if they are such great fences as Marius but I'm fairly sure that we'll see each other on quite a couple of events and tournaments and until then I hope for him that he actually fixed his tip on the blade properly so it doesn't go flying off like here multiple times but then again, nothing that couldn't be fixed with a good amount of duct tape. So let's get into the bout. Just like I do, Marius tries to take as much ground as possible, trying to provoke with wide attacks to then work himself in. But here I catch one of his mandriti with a mandrito of my own and immediately repose with a reverso to the legs, uh, which then scores me two points. In these last parts you will see almost no feeling out at all because Marius and I fence each other or fenced each other so often already that basically we use the time more to exert some psychological pressure on the opponent, right? So in the next bout as well you will see us uh, kind of going straight to the middle and then start throwing attacks into the wide range, trying to provoke a big action from our opponent. I think I got him here with a, with a mandrito, but uh, the judges don't call out, so we keep going. I step in a bit too much. Marius strikes his mandrito under my Guadi tester, so I get hit in the leg and he actually covers the after blow good on him. This last bout that will follow now is a really great example on why you shouldn't throw committed attacks into a waiting and ready opponent. So basically if they don't give you a tempo, if they don't already move and you throw any attack, you risk getting into counters, which is what Myos does right here, getting a really nice outside parry and then throwing the mandrito to the exact same spot as the as a last bout right onto my upper thigh why I got a really nice hammer home right now. So here are the results of the round robin pool phase. Like I said the final four will be determined first by how many unharmed bouts they did and the total amount of bouts for each fighter was 24 and I got 15 unharmed which I think uh, is a really good number. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe, share with a friend, you can also support us in Patreon if you would like to. Until next time, hopefully to the finals, bye bye.